This video is sponsored by Latitude. More about them a little later. A few months back, out of the blue, Google imposed strict quota limits on the Google Analytics 4 API, which threw a rather large spanner in the works for a lot of people's reporting. Essentially, it made a lot of reports and dashboards unusable. Saying this, I tested the API the other day and found that it was a lot more usable than before, so perhaps Google has relaxed the quota limits. In any case, it could revert to how it was before at any time, so I still think it's best to find an alternative solution. So at the time the new limits were introduced, I made a video explaining what they were and the alternative solutions that Google proposed for getting around them. One of them was to link your GA4 property to Google's BigQuery and export the data there, then connect your BI tool to BigQuery and build reports that way. However, if you actually managed to do this, and it's fairly simple to do, you probably took one look at the data and wondered exactly what you were looking at, especially if you're not someone like me who's used to working with and manipulating data. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make sense of this data so that you can build your reports in whatever BI tool you use. Let's jump in. Hello and welcome to Learn BI Online with me, Adam Finer, helping you do more with data. So the tool I'll be using in this tutorial is one that a lot of people who build reports with Google Analytics will also be using. Looker Studio. But if you use a different tool like Power BI or Tableau, don't worry. The main idea behind this tutorial is to help you to understand how the data is collected and stored, which will in turn help you to create any calculations and custom fields you might need using your specific tool. So it's more about method than practice. But before we get on to working with the data, there'll be some of you who haven't already linked your GA4 property to BigQuery yet. So I'll show you how that's done first. If you've already done this, you can just skip ahead. First things first, if you don't already have a BigQuery account, you'll need to set one up. This can be done via the link in the description. Make sure that you also set up a project in your BigQuery account because this is where you'll store the data. Once your BigQuery account is set up, you'll need to go to the admin section in Google Analytics, select the property you want to link, and then scroll down to the product links section at the bottom of the page. Select BigQuery links and follow the instructions. Hit the link button that will take you to this page where you'll need to choose a BigQuery project to export to. Select your project. Then on the next page, you'll choose the location of the Google servers where you'd like your data to be stored. If you'd like to exclude any events from the export, you can do this by hitting Configure Data Streams and Events. And finally, you'll need to specify the frequency at which the data will be streamed to your BigQuery project. This can be either live or daily, depending on your reporting requirements. And that's it. Data will now start automatically streaming to your BigQuery project. Totally painless. You do need to bear in mind though that no historical data will be exported, only data from the date that you set up the export. You can backfill GA4 data into BigQuery, but that's not the aim for this video. If you'd like me to make another video showing you how to do that, please hit the like button and let me know in the comments below. One other thing you might want to do is to combine data from your old Universal Analytics property with your new GA4 one to give you some continuity with your reporting. Well, it just so happens that that's something you can do easily with the sponsor of today's video, Latitude. Latitude is the data workspace for startups because it allows you to connect to tons of data sources in just a few clicks, providing the speed and simplicity that early startups need to drive their business forward. Latitude lets you bring all your data into their stable and robust data engine and query it there, allowing you to get the value and insights you need from your data without the headache of building your own infrastructure. Once your data is in Latitude, you can explore it in an infinite canvas by either manually writing SQL, using their English Text to SQL AI Assistant, or by using visual programming blocks like joins, where's, or groups. 
Then easily turn your explorations into visualizations like bar, line and pie charts and build reports and dashboards to share with stakeholders. One awesome thing about Latitude is that you can join different data sources in the same analysis, like joining GA4 and Universal Analytics. Or you could join your production SQL database with HubSpot and Google Analytics to build the whole funnel for your startup. With Latitude's collaborative workspace, you can bring your team together in your data exploration process and make sure everyone in your organization has access to the right data to make smarter decisions and drive your business forward. Try Latitude for free now or book a demo by going to latitude.so or just click the link in the description. Thanks, Latitude. If you're wondering about the cost of streaming this data, Google states you will incur additional BigQuery costs for using streaming export at the rate of five cents per gigabyte of data. One gigabyte equates to approximately 600,000 Google Analytics events, though that number will vary depending on event size. So not expensive at all. Once the data starts streaming to BigQuery, it looks like this. GA4 data is collected as events, and all of the different events are kind of tangled up together. This means that we need to try and untangle them by separating them out using filtering and calculations. If you'd like more detailed information about the data sources schema, I've left a link in the description. Next, I'm going to connect BigQuery to Looker Studio, which is very simple. You just need to create a new data source, select the BigQuery connector, and navigate to your events table located in your project. You'll need to check this radio button as well. Once this is done, we'll create a new report and add the data. What you'll notice when you look at the fields available on the right is that the original field names have been substituted with more recognizable ones, making the data easier to understand. Let's take a look at the basic structure of the data. As we know, GA4 data is based on events. So if I add event name to the query, we can see the top level events that data is collected for. These are just the standard events. If you've created custom events, they should appear here too. Then for each event, we also have event parameters. So when I add that to the query, we can see that, for example, the click event has parameters like page title, link URL, GA session ID, etc. Then each of these parameters has a value, either a string, text, or numeric. Let's add them to the query. For the click event and the source parameter, we can see the different string values. And for the GA session ID parameter, because it's a number, we can see the aggregated sum of all the GA session ID values. Make sense? Hopefully at this point, you're having a eureka moment. First, we're going to move on to recreating some of the standard metrics you see in Google Analytics reporting. One thing to note is that you may see some discrepancies between the figures you see in the Google Analytics interface and those you see from the calculations you'll create. This is normal and is explained by Google in this article that I'll add a link to in the description. Okay, first sessions. As we've already seen, there's a GA session ID event parameter. According to Google, the standard method of counting sessions for GA4 properties is counting the unique combinations of user pseudo ID or user ID and GA session ID, regardless of the time frame. So in order to calculate the number of sessions, we need to concatenate these two things using the following formula. Concat, case when event param name equals GA session ID, then event param value end, comma, user pseudo ID. When I add this calculated dimension to a scorecard, we can see that the distinct count aggregator is being used by default, which gives us the correct result. Next, we'll want to calculate engaged sessions. This is not so straightforward because it involves unnesting data in a way that's not really possible in Looker Studio. The best way to do it that I've found is to simply use the session engaged event parameter name and the corresponding parameter value. 
When I compare the figures with what I see in the GA4 interface, they match almost exactly. So I'm pretty confident the calculation holds water. If you know any better, please do let me know in the comments. So in a new field we'll call engaged sessions, we'll write the formula case when event param name equals session engaged, then event param value end. The parameter value is one or zero. So the sum aggregator will sum up the one values in the relevant rows and we get our engaged session count. Now that we have these two metrics, we can calculate the engagement rate, which is the number of engaged sessions divided by the total number of sessions. Let's create this field. We need to remember that sessions uses count distinct. So the formula is sum engaged sessions divided by count distinct sessions. And then we'll add that to the report. Let's turn this into a percentage. Conversely, the bounce rate is simply 100% minus the engagement rate. So we can create that metric easily with the formula 1 for 100% minus engagement rate. We'll do one last one in terms of engagement before moving on to users. Average engagement time per session. To calculate this, we have the event parameter name engagement time msec which is the time in milliseconds. We'll first need to translate that to seconds by dividing by 1000. So the formula here would be case when event param name equals engagement time msec, then event param value divided by 1000 end. Once we've calculated this, we can then create the final metric with the formula sum engagement time seconds divided by count distinct sessions and we'll add it to the report. So we've now got five different metrics. Let's move on to users. For total users, it's very simple because we actually have a unique users metric already available. Or another way to calculate it would be to do a distinct count of user pseudo ID, which gives us the same value. We can actually use this pseudo user ID to calculate new users. We use it in conjunction with event name first visit and then count the distinct number of user IDs. So our formula is case when event name equals first visit, then user pseudo ID end. Once we have these metrics built, we can then combine them with some of the existing dimensions like source, medium, date and country to build out our reports. There is one dimension that isn't directly available and that you'll have to create yourself and that's the default channel grouping because it's fairly complicated. I'm not going to go through it in this video. Instead, if you want to get hold of it along with all the other formulas from this video, I've left a link in the description to a video cheat sheet. Now that you know how these metrics have been built, you should be able to go ahead and build out any others you might need for things like e-commerce reporting. Just recreate the table we built at the beginning so you can see which combinations of event dimensions and metrics to use. Obviously, the formulas we've written in this tutorial are made for Looker Studio, but you should now be able to understand the logic behind them, which will, in turn, help you to recreate them in your chosen BI tool. If you don't have a chosen BI tool yet and you'd like to learn how to use Looker Studio, I've made a 15-minute tutorial to help you get started just click here. Before you do, please hit the like button if you found this video helpful and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!